Hello, and welcome to just a quick overview of Wrath of Shardalon for Dungeons and Dragons. Okay, I need the rule book and I need the adventure book with me at all times. Hello, my name is Olasna Crafts and more. I don't know if you guys just saw me. That's better. Perfect. Okay. This is my fifth take. I'm gonna post, I'm gonna post my epic failure one, but I don't wanna talk too much, I just wanna play. I'm playing easy mode. I got three healing surges. I don't care if you even use all five. Have fun, that's the whole point of all these games. Okay, I have stacked the deck. I've actually made it easier. I used encounters um, that I'm a little more used to. Here's where I usually go wrong. Sequence of play. On the, on the sequence of play card, I don't follow it. I just wing it. And then it's usually some kind of... Um, special room or some kind of environmental encounter that I always forget to put in. Let's play. These are fun. There's three actual old, like three original board games. There's only one, one dice in this game, a D20. And everything is easier and friendly. And you can buy other um, buy other expansions to add to this, like the Dungeon Command. Dungeon Command actually comes with painted finger figures. Fingers, figures. You can use them. Too much talking. Play. First, I you always have to go through this game setup. Start playing. Give each player a sequence card. Place the dying figures in easy easy reach. Pick an adventure, check the adventure setup, place stir tile in the center unless otherwise told not to. Start with first level heroes. First level heroes. They can they can level up on an attack on a natural 20. Or if you get a treasure card that says you they can level up. Okay tiles this is actually two tiles you see the divider there's actually two of them two tiles one two so if i want to move over in this quadrant one two not diagonal you can move diagonal on the squares but when you want to move tiles you cannot move diagonals through tiles Player setup. Player turn, hero phase, exploration phase, villain phase. How do you move? Um, a lot of this is pretty awesome. Let's see, I think I remember pretty much how to start. And I know I'm forgetting something here. The whole point of these games are to have fun. You can make your own adventures. You can customize it in just about any way. First time we use the suggested, I am Tarak. 
half-orc rogue. He has furious assault. Furious assault. Positioning shot. Distracting jab. Tornado strike. And tumbling escape. So my guy starts with five. Now, as you play, you can change these if you'd like. And there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of instructions on how to use these appropriately. Set these cards aside. See if you level up, you get to do more stuff. Second level. Oh, but my guy's first level. I was trying to cheat here. Okay. Oh boy, oh boy. Adventure 1. A day in the life of a hero. While chasing monsters through the wilderness around Firestorm Peak, you fall through a hole into the caverns below. Can you survive long enough to find another way out? Goal. Explore the dungeon, reach the tunnel exit, and escape before the monsters destroy you. Numbers of heroes. One hero. Solo experience. Uno experienzo. Adventure setup. Special components in this adventure. Start dungeon tile. Tunnel exit. Cobalt Dragon Lord villain card and figure. Place a start tile on the table. Pre place any hero on any square adjacent to the stairway on the start tile. Place the tunnel exit to the side. And shuffle the dungeon tile stack. And then insert the tunnel exit tile into the dungeon tile stack as the sixth one. But I want this to be fast and quick, so I made it the third one. Special adventure rules. When the hero reveals the tunnel exit tile, plus the cobalt dragon lord in the tile and read the text below. Victory. You win the game when your hero defeats the cobalt dragon lord and escapes from the dungeon by ending his or her hero phase on the stairs on the tunnel exit tile. Defeat. You lose this adventure if your hero has zero hit points at the start of his or her turn and there are no healing surge tokens remaining. When you start the adventure, read, The monsters raiding the village of Longbridge have led you on a long chase. Just as you are about to catch up with the last of them, the ground beneath you breaks away and you plunge into a deep, deep hole, a large, large chasm. Frightening, echoing sounds. You've fallen into the dungeon beneath Firestorm Peak. Can you survive long enough to find a way out of the dark and twisting tunnels? Okay. I have three healing search tokens. I should have five, but I made this easy. Three... Doesn't matter. Don't judge me. I won't judge you. No one's judging. We can play. Okay. Where is my sequence of play? Oh. Crud. This is exactly what I was trying to warn you about. Once again. Oops. I did it again. I played with the rules. I don't like to read anything. Oh, I'm not good. Okay. As. Okay, where is it? Where does it tell me what to do? I'm supposed to have treasure cards. What does it say to take a treasure card? Each hero also draws a treasure card. Draw and discard until you get a treasure card with an item on it. So you have to remember to have your treasure card. What is this? Item. Gauntlets of Ogre Power. 
These metal gauntlets grant the wielder incredible strength. Play this item immediately. You deal plus one damage when you hit an adjacent monster with an attack while this item is in play. Price, 2,000 gold pieces. So if you actually did want to compete against others, you can do um, whoever has the most treasure amount of gold pieces. So I get a plus one damage. That's awesome. I do an extra damage when the monster is adjacent to me, so close to me, right next to me. Perfect. Now, what was I going to say? Okay, this is a one-player game. This is a Uno Experienzo. I love one-player games. They're becoming more famous, like Castle Panic has a single-player mode. But there are also one-player games that are only meant for one player. Like, it's Friday board game. Let's move on. My guy moves six. He has a speed of six. Okay, I have my treasure. Now we're going to start the adventure. Sequence of play. Hero phase. If you have zero hit points... Okay, this is really important to go through all these. If you have zero hit points, use a healing search token if one, avail if one is available. Perform one of the following actions. Move and then make an attack. Attack and then move. Or make two moves. I'm actually just going to move here. Okay? At an end. For very good reason. I always like to put an extra tile down, because if you don't put an extra tile down, you still have an encounter card. Now, I'm done with my hero phase. Exploration phase. If your hero occupies a square adjacent to an unexplored edge, unexplored, occupies a square, yeah, I'm on a square, go to step two. Step two, draw a dungeon tile and place it with its triangle adjacent to the unexplored edge. Okay, so here we have a black triangle, and here we have smoke and black triangle. Now the triangle is facing my guy. Then draw a monster card and place that monster on the new tile. Monster card. My monster is a human cultist. He has an armor class of 14, and he only has 1 HP. Bring the cultist in. They actually tell you which, what the monster's name is. This is really awesome because the archer doesn't match its actual card. I had to look at the bottom to see that it's an orc archer. Now villain phase. If you didn't place a tile during your exploration phase, but we did, or if you placed a tile with a black triangle, but we did, draw an encounter card. A gap in the armor. It's a curse. A curse! The last fight damaged your armor, and you must spend a few moments to repair it. You are cursed. Place this card on your hero card as a reminder. You have a minus four penalty to armor class while this curse is active. If you do not move during your hero phase, discard this card. I did move. Okay. So my armor class is now ten. Now, if a villain is in play, activate it. Cultist. If the cult is within one tile of a hero, it moves adjacent to the closest hero and attacks with a poison dagger. Okay. It gets plus six attack, and it does one damage, and it poisons me. Let's... Human cultist. Attacking. He got an 18. He gets six. 24. All he needed was a 10 plus. I mean a... Yes, a 10 plus, because my armor class is 10 at the moment. So he hits me, and I am poisoned. Perfect. So I get 1 damage. So now I only have 7 HP. And I'm poisoned. You take one damage at the start of your hero phase. Discard this marker at the end of your hero phase if you roll a plus ten. Okay. I have my curse. I have my poison. I have my guy. 
I have done everything. Now I can go back to the hero phase. If you have zero hit points, use a healing search token if one is available. Or perform one of the following actions. Oops. I have a condition. I'm poisoned. At the start of my hero phase, I take another HP. So now I have six left. Perform one of the following actions. Move and then make an attack. Attack and then move. Or make two moves. I'm going to attack. And if I hit him, I'm going to take another move. Okay. So the gap in the armor, I have to do the test. No, wait. If I don't move, I can get rid of this. So if I get the cultist and I don't move, I can get rid of my curse. Rolling for Tarak. 13. Whoops. I didn't pick I didn't pick which one I was going to use. I'm going to use my regular at will power. That means I can use them as many they don't they don't expire. Uh, I'm going to use a distracting jab. So I add 7 to my roll. It I get a plus 7. That makes it a 20. His armor class is only 14, so I only needed a 14 plus. He is hit. He is removed. I get this. I have one experience. At five experience points and a 20, a natural 20 at an attack, I can turn in five experience points and level up my guy. And at the end of my turn, I'll get another treasure card. Okay, so I'm, I need to do my poison, so I need to have a 10 plus. Curing my poison. Yes, no longer poison. I didn't move, and I'm ending my turn. My curse is gone. Now let me get my treasure. Item, push and recover. Use at any time. Add one condition on your hero or an adjacent hero. Discard after using. It's only worth 300 gold. This elixir clears the mind and purifies the body. Sequence of play. My hero's done. If your hero occupies a square to, adja to an adjacent unexplored edge, no it doesn't. Otherwise, go to the villain phase. If you didn't place a tile during your exploration phase, or if you place a tile with a black triangle... I did not place a tile during my exploration phase. Draw on a counter card. Encounter. Sulfurous cloud. Event attack. A slight rumble precedes a blast of noxious gas from a crack in the wall. Attack each hero on the active hero's tile. Attack plus eight. Damage. One and poison. Even if it misses, it still poisons. Discard this card. Okay, so he's attacking Tarak. Sulfurous cloud six plus eight is 14 my armor class is 14 so he hits for one and i'm poisoned again and then i discard this card now i'm back at the hero phase i take a take a hit for my poisoned because I do it first thing I do is poison see the these are one of the conditions that I forget like poison like sometimes I forget like two or three turns but I'm really practicing and working hard and getting good at this okay I'm going to get rid of my potion of recovery discard that and I'm going to get rid of my poisoned and then I'm going to move over here, I'm going to add my turn. Sequence of play. If your hero occupies a, occupies a square adjacent to an unexplored edge, go to step two. Okay, step two. Draw a dungeon tile and place it with its triangular adjacent to an unexplored edge. Okay, this is the unexplored edge. It's another black one. Draw a monster card and place that monster on the new tile. Monster card. 
It's a snake. Goes on the black smoke. Put that down. Now, if you didn't place the tile during your exploration phase, I did. If you place the tile with a black triangle, draw on a counter card. Black triangle. Event. Unbearable heat. The volcanic vapors that fill the tunnel slowly wear down your endurance. Each hero takes one damage. This card, this card. Now I've taken five damage. I have three HP left. If a villain is in play, activate it. If the snake is with one tile of a hero, it moves adjacent to the closest hero and attacks with a venomous bite. Attacking. A one plus seven makes an eight. Doesn't hit my armor class, so he misses. And there's no, um, there's no penalty for missing with this one. Now we start over. Hero phase. If you have zero hit points, use a healing search token if one's available. Now, perform one of the following attacks. With one of the following actions. Move and then make an attack. Attack and then move or make two moves. I'm going to attack and then I'm going to try and move. Okay, his armor class is only 13. I need a 13 plus. And I'm going to use distracting jab, which gives me a plus 7. I got 5, plus 7 is 12. I don't make it. I miss. That's okay. I'm still going to run. I'm still going to move. I got to move to make another tile. Okay. I'm not poisoned. I don't have that condition. I'm done with my turn. Exploration phase. If your hero occupies a square adjacent to an unexplored edge, go to step 2. Draw a dungeon tile and place it with its triangle adjacent to the unexplored edge. It's the tunnel exit. Bum, bum, bum. Oops. It's got a black triangle and a smoke. Oh my gosh. Now I'm supposed to read you something when this happens. When you reveal the tunnel exit, read. Ahead, you see light streaming in from above, illuminating a flight of ancient stone steps. Dun, dun, dun. You found a way out of the dungeon. Alas, unfortunately, the path is guarded by one more monster. The Cobalt Dragon Lord, Merak. A hero on the stairs at the end of his or her hero phase can leave the dungeon. Now, Merak, Cobalt Dragon Lord, is a reptile. He's got an armor class of 17. He's got 6 HP. Okay. We're going to place him, and then we'll talk about this later. Step 3. Draw a monster card and place that monster on the new tile. Done. If you didn't place a tile during your exploration phase, or if you place a tile with the black triangle, draw on a counter card. Curse, the horrifying roar. You are cursed. Place this card on your hero as a reminder. You make a negative four penalty attack to rolls to to attack rolls while this curse is active. Roll a die at the end of your hero phase. Ten plus. Discard this card. The distant sound of a roaring dragon fills you with fear, causing you to uncontrollably shake. Boo hoo hoo. Villain phase. If he, if villain is in play, activate it. Cobalt. Maroc. If Cobalt is adjacent to a hero, it attacks the, that hero with a short sword. And then Cobalt moves to any square within one tile. If the Cobalt is within one tile of a hero, it moves as adjacent to the closest hero and attacks with a short sword. Okay, so Cobot's going to move here. He's going to attack. With a sh short sword, he does 2 damage. He gets a 12, plus 8, makes 20, beats my armor class. 
hits me for two. Now, activate each monster and trap you control in turn in the order you drew them. If the snake is in one within one tile of a hero, it moves adjacent to the closest hero and attacks him with a venomous bite. Okay. Plus seven. What is my penalty for? Two attack rolls. Okay. Five. Plus seven is twelve. My armor class is fourteen. So he misses. Okay, I just got a curse. I don't got anything else. Now we're going to start over. Hero phase. I can move and attack, attack and then move, or make two moves. I am going to attack Kobold. And I'm going to I'm going to use no. I'm trying to think. I'm going to use the distracting jab on Kobold. Okay, I get minus four. Let's go attack Maroc. I got a five. Plus seven is twelve. Minus four is eight. Missed armor class and I miss. Now I can move. I don't. I will move. I'll move over here and ha. Uh, Go on the steps. No, I'll go over here. So that way I'm closer to the steps. That way I can end the game. Now, at the end of my hero turn, roll a die. I need a 10 plus to get rid of this card. Bummer. Okay, that was very sad. Let's sequence and play. If your hero occupies a square, unexplored. Nope, it is explored. Okay, go to villain phase. If you didn't place a tile during exploration phase, draw on a counter card. Event, deadly poison. Each hero is currently poisoned and takes one damage. Draw another encounter card. The toxin infecting you is unnaturally potent. <sighs> that is eight. Guess what, guys? I fainted. I'm going to put this event over here. Then I'm going to draw another encounter card. Each Attack each hero. It's not going to work because my guy's already fainted. Okay. Going to put that down. He just lays down and nothing. everything kind of ignores him now. Now... The snake's gonna. The snake's is coming over one tile closer. He's gonna miss. He's not gonna touch my guy, but Maroc. He's just gonna look at my guy. Now. I'm gonna start over. I'm still cursed. And I'm gonna use a healing surge. And my healing surge value is 4. So I got 4 HP, but I feel kind of refreshed. I still have my curse. So if I have my curse, I am going to use Distracting Jab on Maroc. Let's roll. Get 15 plus 7. 22. Minus 4 is 18. His armor class is 17. I beat that. So I do 1 damage. And I deal 1 damage when I hit an adjacent monster. Because of my gauntlets of ogre power. So I actually hit him for 2. And now he has 4 HP. Now that my hero turn is done, I'm going to roll. I need a plus 10. Okay. If you're your hero, no, un it is explored. Go to the villain phase. If you didn't place a tile, draw on a counter card. 
hidden snipers. Whenever the active hero ends or his or her hero phase on a tile that does not have any other hero on it, the active hero takes one damage. Of course I'm going to take one damage. I don't have... I'm solo. Okay, got to remember this. Whenever I end my hero... Okay. Now... Now what am I doing? Now we attack. Snake attacks first. Snake comes... Is uh, within one tile away. Okay, he's going to attack. One plus seven is eight. Misses. <laughs> okay, now... Marak's going. He's gonna roll. He gets a 14 plus 8, which should be 22. And that's above, and he hits for 2. So I only have... Wait, wait, wait. He takes, he takes away 2. So I only got 2 HP left. And now it is my turn I am going to attack Maroc with distracting jab high roller nineteen and I get seven okay I take it down to four so twenty six twenty two and I hit for one and two thanks to my gauntlets so Maroc only has two left now I end my hero phase I take hit from the hidden snipers did you notice that environment I almost missed that now we have like a whole checklist to go through. Actually, it should say, do you have any poisons or any other conditions? Now, I didn't, I'm in exploration phase. If I didn't place a tile, go to the villains. I'm going to need an encounter card. <coughs> okay, draw an encounter card. A gap, a curse in the armor. Your curse. Place this card on your hero as a reminder. You have a negative four penalty to your. Oh wait, I did I roll for that? Maybe I did. You get negative four on your AC, so my AC is now ten. If I don't move, I can get rid of that. Now, the snake's gonna attack. Six. Plus 7 is 13, and he hits. Yes! So I lose an HP, and I'm poisoned. Get knocked down. Now he's not going to do anything. Maroc's not going to do anything. I am poisoned. So I got to turn in a healing, healing surge at the beginning of my turn. So I get 4 HP. Lose 1 to... Lose one to poison. Okay, now my guy's up. I'm going to attack Maroc with distracting jab. High number, high number. Six plus seven is 13 minus four. No, because he's 17, so it doesn't matter anyway. Miss Blink. He wasn't distracted at all. Maroc's attention was very keen. Now, I'm going to get hit by a sniper. Now I'm going to roll for my terrifying roar. I need a plus 10. I still get minus 4 on that. Oh my gosh. Now I didn't move, so I get rid of my armor. Now we go to exploration phase. If you if you did not put a new tile, go to villain phase. Um, do an encounter. Each hero takes one damage. Discard this card. Event unbearable heat. The volcanic vapors that fill the tunnel slowly wear down your endurance. 
So I take one HP, looks like I'm losing. Um, okay, so since I didn't get rid of my terrifying roar, I will, oops, don't I take a hit for the snipers? Did I roll for my poisoned? I don't even remember. See, I lost track of these. Should have rolled for my poisoned. Okay. Guy's knocked down. He can't get hurt anymore. Last search token. I have 4 HP. Okay. I am poisoned, and I got... Snipers, let's start over zero. Use a healing surge. Did that move an attack or an attack? I am at the beginning of my turn, I lose one HP, and then the snipers happen at the end. Okay, I am going to attack. I'm going to use my tornado strike. Your weapons become a blur as you make swift sweeping attacks. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Attack four times. Each attack can be used against any monster on your tile. After the attacks, place your hero on any square on your tile. Okay, attack one. Five plus seven minus four. Brink. One. We won't even go over that. I got two more. High rollers. Eighteen plus seven. Twenty-five minus four. Twenty-one. I hit... One, and then two, because of my gauntlets of ogre power. Maroc has been defeated. Now I get one more chance, and I'm going to use it on this snake. Wait, I forgot to take a hit for the hidden snipers. 15 plus 7, 22 minus 4, 18. I take the snake down too. Okay. Now. I start over. Right? No. No. Because that was attack. That's when the sniper hits. At the end of my attack. Then an earthquake. I get an event encounter because I didn't draw a villain. See, I'm already forgetting. If your hero didn't occupy, go to villain. Okay, roll. It's a 12 plus 6. It's an 18. Hits me for two. Seriously. And I'm dazed and I'm dead and it's game over. Okay. This has been the best game so far. Want to thank you. Thank you very much. I lost. But it was fun. Everything's cut out. Brings me back to my hero quest days. Um, thank you guys.